Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. Today, we're going to talk about this guy here a little bit more. The Edelkron Slider 1 with the motion module, my favorite new little toy. This thing is so cool. And uh, specifically today, I want to talk about doing time-lapse photos with this thing. Now, one of the neat things about this whole device right here is that you can do, you can create a time-lapse setup with the app. And um, I've shown that, I didn't even bring my phone in here, so I'm not gonna show it to you again, because we showed that in an earlier video. We'll link to that, wherever that is. Um, but you can set in there how long you want the time-lapse to be. And it took me a little while to kind of really figure this out and get it um, get it understood. Hey, good morning, Sean, good to see you out there, buddy. Um, to figure out how this worked, I actually talked to tech support and they, they seemed confused, and then I figured it out on my own. So, on, you know, I need I need the phone. Uh, Ryan, bring me my phone, would you? Um, I gotta show this to you properly. Because what you do is you set a duration. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. So fantastic. You set a duration on the app uh, for the video. What you would think is the setting the time duration for the time lapse, because that's what it is when you're in normal video mode. So you're basically saying if you if you're doing video mode, forget time lapse for a moment. Say you're doing a regular video mode, oh shut up. Um, and you uh, you want a 10 second time lapse, right? So you dial in 10 seconds and you hit go and it moves across 10 seconds. Well, when you're gonna do a time lapse instead of just the video slide, what it doesn't tell you because you you hit the whole convert to time lapse button after you've set everything up, what it doesn't tell you is that that duration that you're setting, you're now actually setting your final duration, right? So if you want a 10 second movie made from a time lapse, you set 10 seconds on the slider. So the duration, kind of becomes, it's the duration of the of the final movie, not the duration of the slide, which I guess makes sense because the duration, if you're in movie mode, the duration of the slide would be the duration of the final movie. So I guess if you think of it that way, it kind of does make sense. Heck, I don't know. Anyway, let's take a look at it. Uh, here's, do, 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 here we go. There's the app. So, okay, this is connected. Uh, my battery's low, but it says status is ready. And on the left, you see it says duration 1789 seconds. And on the right, it says speed of 0.1%. So that's kind of its slowest. Well, actually, you can go even slower than that, can't you? 2433 seconds, that's your longest. Okay. But as I dial this up, spin the dial, spin the dial, spin the dial, it changes the speed. So there's 100% speed, and that is a six and a quarter second duration. Now, actually, if you look down under, under there where it says A to B, I've got a little bit of ramp on that. So let's turn off the ramping. And now 100% speed is 5.54 seconds. So just, just over a five and a half second long, and that's the fastest it can go. So if you're doing video, you would set the, let's say I wanted a 15 second video slide. I would dial the speed until I got to 15 seconds. So I get in, I can, you know, I can get as accurate as I want to in there. Uh, we're just gonna call that close enough. Oh, look at that, nailed it, 15 seconds. Okay, so that is now a 15 second video. And uh, hello, Music Distinctive. Um, good night and good morning to you. And you're asking, this is about video. This is gonna be more about the um, uh, time lapse, but I'm starting with the video explanation to understand how to set the It'll Chrome one. So we've set a duration of 15 seconds. Now, if we're gonna do video, if I just hit play now, let's see, this, yeah, that's on camera. If I go, uh, I don't even know which side I'm on, A to B or B to A, let's just see. Okay, there we go. So it's moving. It's gonna take 15 seconds to go from A to B. By the way, little beef, please. A uh, little beef here. The which side is A, which side is B is always confusing the hell out of me because it depends on which way it's facing. Um, you know, the camera can spin around because of the head that I've got on here. So now I don't remember which is A and which is B. And I can never remember which is the front, and which is the back. So I haven't done it yet, but I got to get stickers and put A, B stickers on this thing because otherwise it's like, it's just super annoying. Um, anyway, uh, Music distri Distinctive is also asking about the name of the app. Well, this is the... Osmo app, uh, I'm sorry, the Slider One app. You see there it's called Slider One. That is the Slider One app for this Edelkron slider. We'll put links to all this in the in the notes as well. Okay, so now if you want to do a time lapse, that 15 second duration is not the duration of the slide, but is now the duration of the final movie. So let's go back to looking at the app here. You see it still says 15 second duration, and there's a button right in the middle of the screen that says convert to time lapse. When I tap that, it now converts it to the time lapse, right? So now I've got a um, a final movie that's going to be 15 seconds. I've already set it to 24 frames per second. That's in the lower left, but I can change that in the settings before. I can choose in the left when I want it to start. So I don't want it to start now, or I don't want it to start in uh, in four hours. You know, whenever you want it to start, we'll do it to start now. And then the duration on the right. And this is why I got confused because there's a duration here, as well as the duration earlier. So the duration on here is how long the time lapse is going to take to capture. The previous duration, the 15 seconds, is how long the final movie is going to be. 
So that's your two settings. Let's go back real quick. The duration on the left here, that's the duration of what your final movie is going to be. So in this case, 15 seconds, or let's say I want to make it a 10 second movie, or I want to make it a one minute movie, whatever. That's the duration of the final movie. Now I go convert to time lapse, and I want that one hour movie to take place over four hours of real time. And then I hit start, and away it goes. Or I want that to happen. Well, it has to be longer than that, right? So it can't be less than an hour. So, and actually, if I hit start, uh, ooh, that's already starting. Okay, you, if you hit start and you don't have it long enough, it'll tell you, hey, it's not long enough, and it tells you what the duration has to be. Um, and Paul, if you're seeing a buffering screen, it could be your less than superior internet, as you are also suggesting. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's all you have to set in there. Now, there's a little cable that connects from here to your camera. Uh, there's a unique cable per camera, obviously, per camera manufacturer. And... Um, and I learned that you have to connect the cable before you turn the camera on. I don't know if that's unique to the GH4, or to the Lumix cameras, or if that's on all cameras, but I was having trouble with that. And then tech support said, plug in the cable. And actually, no, I found this one in a forum. Plug in the cable um, and then turn the camera on. So that's, that's, then it'll talk to it. And then it works perfectly. It works out really, really well. It worked very nicely. So I used this a few times in Oaxaca. As I have said every time I've talked about this thing before, and I'll repeat again, I uh, This is my very first slider, so I am definitely not getting the most creative use out of it yet. I'm still in the new, oh, look, I can make the camera move mode, so I don't have the greatest time-lapse things here. But I played with a couple of them and um, you know, had some fun. So we're going to take a look at those. Also, I would like to point out, um, time-lapse itself is not really my thing. I haven't done a lot of this. And I know there's there are tons of videos and tons of really great education and... Uh, about doing really great time-lapse videos. Look some up, <laughs> don't ask me. Uh, one of the things that I have seen talked about is if you're doing things like a sunset um, or sunrise, where the light is obviously gonna change dramatically, specific ways to set up the camera. And I, now I put it in aperture priority mode and let it go. And I just did kind of a sunset, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment, which um, it, it came off fine. I think, but there's probably better ways to do it. And again, do your research on time-lapse photography. I'm just talking about how you use the Osmo with it. My time-lapse photography itself is probably not all that exciting. Um, I did a few of them. So let's take a look at the Mac here. I've got on here, uh, let's see, this one had 446 pictures. This is in Oaxaca. This is, um, uh, crap, what's this church? It's Santiago, Church of Santiago. So I'm sorry, I forget. This is in Oaxaca City. And I have on here, what is it, 446 pictures. Uh, and if I scroll down, you can kind of see the lighting changing a little bit on these. Change, change, changing, get a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker. And then I think, did I capture the actual, oh, ah. <laughs> I was looking for this hand thing earlier and I totally missed it. That was my interruption, so I knew that I was creating a new time lapse and I totally missed that. So I exported all of these frames to create a movie with but I reset it. So, well, that's okay. I haven't created the movie yet. So here's a second go of it. So they're starting over. It looks like it did a little exposure change. And I think in this one, yeah, we see it getting significantly darker. Yep, that's a significantly darker one. So that's that's going to be actually a more dramatic one to do. Now, I exported all these files, and here's a, a very interesting thing to, um, to think about when you're creating a time lapse and exporting exporting the pictures to make the movie with. Um, at least I think it's interesting. What the hell do I know? Oh, and this thing's actually trying to do it. Even though it can't control it, I hear it moving a tiny little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'll just let it go. Um, okay, so I'm shooting not in 16 by 9. I'm shooting 4 by 3 aspect ratio because that's what this camera shoots. If you're shooting on a Canon or Nikon, you're shooting a 3-2 aspect ratio, whatever. Odds are your final output, you want it to be 16 by 9 if you're making a movie. Uh, the resolution of this is obviously way over HD. It's over a, a 4K. It's bigger than both of those, which means you have some some room to play in the final video. So while I could go into Lightroom and set a crop, center crop, top crop, whatever, to the 16 by 9 aspect, aspect ratio and export those out at HD or at 4K or whatever I wanted, I would then be locking in my, my position. However, if I export the full aspect ratio and even the full size of the frame, then that will allow me to move the frame in my video editor. So if I take it into Final Cut, Premiere, whatever, to move that frame around while the video is playing 
and even scale it, especially, I mean, this is already going to be over 4K, but um, if especially if I'm not putting HD, I have a huge amount of scaling that I can do. So not only would you then get the camera movement, but you could have a push into the shot. Now, it's not a slider push, but it's a, a pushing into the frame and even a rise or lowering, a drop or raise, what do you call that, of the frame. It would be the equivalent of, for those who are familiar with, um, with anamorphic and film shooting, of shooting something called open gate, where you have a larger film frame than what the final shot's gonna be, so that you can actually move that up and down, slide that up and down. It'd be the same idea, but you'd have room to move left and right, up and down, and zoom in and out. So really some creative options, I think, for doing your time lapse. So that's kind of cool, right? Okay, so I took all these photos and I exported them out and I was really, really clever when I did it and I put them right in my pictures folder. So I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to very quickly, I'm going to do TL1 and TL2 so I can separate these things because I do have that hand in there and I'm going to have to find that hand, which is going to be a, an interesting challenge to do. But let's see if we can do that real quick. Um, I will bring this, oops. Uh, oh, I don't want to do that mode. Um, how am I going to do this? God, what's a good way to do this? I have to find the hand shot. So here's what I'm dealing with here. I've got all these shots. Where's my those hands? There they are. Okay, let's do this. Go to list view. It's everything from there down is TL2. Okay, this isn't so bad. Okay, find all of those. Super. And now this is going to be the fun part is dropping those into TL2. Okay, click and drag. And TL2 we go. TL2. Hope I got that right. Let's see here. Let's double check that. Open that guy up. Let's go to list view or icon view. And are they getting darker? Oh, <laughs> undo. I think I've got sorted in reverse order here. Let's try this again, shall we? These are the kind of things that happen when you're trying to do this kind of crap live. Don't worry. I'll edit some. Maybe I'll edit some of this out for the final one. Let's sort by name vertically. What do you call it? Um, top to bottom. There we go. And let's try that again. So back to the icon view. Come here. You get to you get to enjoy my suffering here. There's the first one. Back to list view. Let's double check that. Up a frame. Yep, that's the hand. Down a frame. Okay. So it's from there down to here that I want. Take all of those. Click and drag that up to TL2. Oh, pff, down at the bottom. Naturally, TL2. There we go. Okay. It would be helpful if, there we go, that moved out of the way. Okay, and then the hands we don't want, hand, hand we don't want. Let's delete those and take the rest of these and drop these into TL1. Okay, so now I use a, a little tool called Time Lapse Assembler to build my time lapses. Super easy. Um, choose your source directory. So that's not the one I want. I put these in the pictures folder. And we're going to go for TL2 because I think it's going to be more interesting what frame rate I did it at, what codec I want this to put in. So I could do photo JPEG, MPEG-4, H.264, whatever. We'll just say H.264. Resize it if I want to. I don't want to. Quality, um, high, I'll just leave it at max. And let's see what happens. So now I click in code. And let's stick this on the desktop, TL2. And it's going to take a few moments to do. So I'll let that churn away. So this is creating that movie file. And it is doing, ugh. OK, seriously, no caller ID. Why am I getting so many of these calls lately? God, so annoying. No matter how many do not call lists, I swear to God, every time you put yourself on a do not call list, it is actually a call me more list. Hi. Um, anyway, so this is encoding. This is going to take a little while. Uh, we'll let that thing spin up and go. I'll just stick that up there so you can see the progress. Um... Hopefully it's not actually stuck. So I'm not putting this movie. It's it's set to H.264 codec. I probably should choose a different one, maybe photo JPEG. Oh, it's done. It's just we didn't get a progress bar. And then I'm going to bring this into Final Cut. Oh, that's what I would do. I will see if I actually want to do that. OK, TL2, here it is. All right, cool. Let's see what this looks like. Did I scale these? All oh, right, I, I scaled these to 4K width. That was stupid. I should have left it at full width. Doesn't matter. All right, let's take a look at it. Let's go to the computer and full screen. And here we go. OK, so the camera movement in here was super, super minimal. Um, right, because this was such a short time lapse. It's a cool time lapse, but we're not getting the slider motion there. OK, let's do then the first one, because I do think that had a better, uh, it was a longer one, so there should be more duration to it. Open that. Uh, leave the settings the same. Click Encode, TL1 on the desktop, and off we go. And 
Yeah, that second one now I remember. I'd forgotten this before. It it was it turned out to be a very short slide. I didn't have much of a slide in there. Now, someone had asked when I very first was talking about this whether this was a long enough slide for um, for landscapes because obviously landscape is really far away. And I'll repeat. I've, I've said this already um, a couple of times, but I'll, I'll repeat it again here while we're waiting for this. Yes, it's a short slide. Obviously, if you had a longer slide, that would be more motion. Obviously. But when it comes to landscape, landscape is so far away that unless you have something in between you and the distant landscape so that you have that parallax shift, whether the slider goes from here to here or here to here, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. You really need that something in between to give that good parallax shift in there. Now, in this case, I think I had some kind of flowery plant things in the shot. Plus, there's people moving about. Plus, it's not super far away. So you will see a little bit of a shift in the building, but not huge, not a huge shift. So we'll see how it turned out. We'll see how it turned out. And if this one sucks, we'll look at another one because I do have a couple more. Um, as soon as this thing says it's done encoding, we'll check it out. So uh, again, Edelcron 1 slider. Let's pull up the web page while we're waiting for this thing. Um, go to the Chrome, go to the Edelcron, Edelcron. And <laughs> Tom says, no more annoying robocalls and telemarketers, nomorobo.com. Oh, thank you, Tom. Excellent. I will have to check that out. Okay, here's the web page for this Edelcron slider. Do go to products, um, slider one and motion module. This is the this is the toy right here that we're looking at. This is what we're talking about. Uh, zero affiliation with the company. I paid my own money for this thing. They didn't give it to me. This is mine. So um, yeah, this is not endorsed or anything like that, yada, yada. It's a, it's neat. Check out the website. If you haven't looked at it before, check it out. It's quite interesting what they talk about in here about the reason they went short and so on and so on. All right, let's see. Is this thing done? Hide, hide, hide. Still turning away. This had more frames, so we'll give that a few more moments to go. Um, hey, while I got you, <laughs> trapped audience, see this URL down here? Uh, uh, not this one. There, that one. There, this one here. Patreon.com slash PhotoJoseph. If you like these things, believe me, the ad revenue that you make off of YouTube until I get to Casey nice, nice tat levels, ain't paying the bills around here. So if you like this sort of thing, if you like these ridiculous shows, you want them to carry on, I would love kick in a few bucks on there. It would help. It would help. A few people have, not many. A um, few people that have have had their credit cards declined, which is a little depressing. But, you know, pitch in. If you like to see these things uh, continue, it would be a, a great help, great support. Excellent. Okay, this is done. Okay, now let's check out LT1. Let's see what this guy looked like. Okay, so here we can see more motion. Look at the plants in the front. Still very slow. It's obviously very slow. Um, but it's moving. It's cool. It's cool. I think, you know, again, not the greatest one in the world. And I don't know if that actually... Let's drag it back and forth. I don't know if this did... That doesn't quite look like the full width of it. I don't remember why I stopped it. There was a good reason. I don't know if someone bumped it. I don't remember what it was. But you can see there, the, the amount of motion is quite small. Part of the problem, too, is the light on here, on these plants in the front, goes away. And so once that's gone, it's harder to see that motion in there. Um, so, you know, not the greatest time lapse in the world, but what you're going to do. All right, let's take a look at the other ones that I did, see if there's anything better. Um, this is not much of a move either. People, there's a dog that came up and sniffed the camera. Excellent. Let's see, if I just go, let's just do this and arrow through it real quick. The color shifts are because that's the raw processing happening. So that looks kind of lame. Yeah, that's really, you know, I don't even know if, I, you know, I don't think this one had the slider on it, come to think of it. No, that's right. I didn't have the slider when I did this one. Ha! So that is not a slider time lapse. Let's take a look at one more. All right, this one I had to stop early because we left. So I don't think there's much of a change in the lighting. But let's see if there is much of a change in the position. Let's get that out of the way. Here we're really seeing the low res preview because it hasn't rendered yet. So there you can see the motion. Well, that's kind of cool, actually. I quite like this one. I do quite like that one, even though it stopped early because we decided to change locations. Um, it's kind of a cool time lapse. Let's go back here. You get the, the other students, the photographers moving in and out of the frame. You get that subtle movement in there. So, you know, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool.
Well, so there you go. Nah, you know, maybe not the greatest examples in the world, but they're kind of fun. They're kind of fun. So I think having a slider on closer up things, as I learned when I was shooting video, and if you watch the previous one, which we'll link to one of these sides, Ryan can tell me later which side I'm supposed to point to. Um, when, when I was doing the video ones, I learned that really having close-up stuff works so much better. Watch the the video that I did of, of earlier this week, I guess it was, or last week, earlier this week, I think, about using this with the videos, because as we kind of progressed through, and remembering that it was the very first time I had one of these things, the shots that I did at the end of the trip turned out a lot better as I got my kind of head around it and really started to get more use out of it and really learn what I could and couldn't do, or should and shouldn't do, I should say. Uh, same kind of thing would apply to the time lapse. You know, if you've got a closer up thing, I think it's going to look a lot more interesting than these distance ones that I'm kind of not getting really great results at. But if I had that closer object in there to set off that parallax shift, then it would be quite a bit more interesting. So there we go. Um, someone's asking, what happened to yesterday's live edit movie? That, my friend, is not a photo moment. The live edit movie is a photoapps.expert live training. And that was shot, was broadcast and recorded yesterday afternoon, late afternoon. It has rendered and will get uploaded today. In fact, that's probably my first thing to do after I'm done with this. So that will be up on photoapps.expert right on the front page. I'd say within maybe an hour or two, you'll have that up there. So please do check that out. Uh, Paul is saying, I think you really have to make the time lapse from behind a bit of vegetation to make it real revealing. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying here. If, if we look at the, um, do I still have this open? Yeah, if we look at this one here, this bit of vegetation that's off to the side there is not really, if, if you know, there are better places for it. There were some photos that I shot. Uh, let's see here, let me go back into Lightroom here. And there was photos that I shot. Let's see if we can find it real quick. Um, where of this church where I did get into the vegetation and came out a lot nicer and uh, would have been a much more interesting time lapse. I think these are, I guess I don't have one here. Um, hmm, where, did I, where are those? Maybe they're in these selects. Nope. Okay, come on. I'm gonna find this real quick because I think that was a more, well, it was 15th, there was on the wrong day. Uh, would have been a really good position for the time lapse. Would have been a lot more interesting. Here we go. This shot here, had I done a time lapse from here, yes, that would have been a much better result. But I didn't. So lesson learned, right? Next time I will go set up a shot like that. Set up a shot with that something in the foreground, like this vegetation here. That really would have made that a lot more interesting. So you're you're absolutely right. Uh, you're absolutely right, Paul. Um, Paul's also asking, how do you focus well, manually? Uh, you don't want focus changing unless that's part of your time lapse, which, ooh, could you focus rack the time lapse automatically? Not with this software. You'd probably have to add some other third party piece to it, which could get really interesting to do a focus rack while you're doing it. Uh, and Sean Real House Films is saying vegetation is tricky if the wind is blowing. Very good point. It creates the convolution convulsion effect. It could be jarring for the eyes. That's a very good point. If it is bouncing around, then yeah, that could get really annoying. So great for fine for video. I mean, if it's not, if it's moving too much, but uh, but would be better if it wasn't bouncing around. So yeah, some type of object. So if you get a tree that's not really going to move that much, that's better. But the little weeds like I have in this picture here probably wouldn't work out so well. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I think that's good. If you got any uh, tips on this, because again, time lapse, I'm not a big time lapser. The slider's new to me. If you have tips like these ones we've just seen here, throw them into the comments. I would love to see and hear what you guys have to say. Let's have a discussion about it. Um, if you've got videos that you want to share, by all means, stick them in the comments. I know those usually get marked as spam, but I see those and I will approve those um, so that people can see your video results out of it. So it's kind of fun. It's fun. It's definitely one of these things I want to play more with. I enjoy it. Uh, I do enjoy it. So again, just reminder on the tip, if you get this whole thing easy to forget with the cable into your camera, you need to turn the camera off, plug it in, turn the camera back on. Or even once you plug it in, just turn the camera off and back on again, it'll pick it up and register it. If you plug in that remote control cable afterwards, it's going to it's gonna get confused. It won't be triggering it. So lesson learned. All right, guys, I am out of here. Um, thank you very much for watching today. Don't forget to do the Patreon thing. Don't forget to check out my stuff on lynda.com. Don't forget to watch a hundred more of these videos. <laughs> Build up that ad revenue. Ay, ay, ay. It's tough to make a living on YouTube, I tell you. All right, guys, I'm out of here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.